Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan. Um, welcome to our videos. Um, today, we're going to talk about August 11th, uh, four games late, two games in China and two games in Korea. So let's dive in. Um, and the LCK, I'll, I'll start with LCK today um, to mix it up a little bit. Um, LCK, we have Kwangdong Freaks um, against Damwon Kia. Um, Damwon Kia is a favorite at mon uh, minus 360. Um, and Kwangdong Freaks is an underdog at plus 225. Yeah, I mean, I fully expect Damwon Kia to win this game. I just want to point out where everybody is on the standings. Um, as you guys know, Damwon Kia is in the playoff hunt um, with along with other teams. You probably saw today um, Sandbox um, beat T1 this morning. So it's it makes a lot of things very dicey and interesting, in my opinion, in terms of playoff seating purposes. Um, you know, Damwon Kia, uh, you know, at 9 and 7, tied with KT and DRX. I mean, every game will matter now. I mean, you know, the Sandbox will finish third. Um Let's see, Sandbox, BT1 today. Yeah, Guangdong Freaks, Danwon Kia. Let's see how many more games Danwon Kia has left. One more game, but against T1. So, you know, not looking ahead, but <laughs> that's going to be a tough matchup for Danwon Kia. Um, I fully expect T1 to win that game, but um, yeah, Danwon Kia needs to win this game, uh, no matter how you slice it. Um I, and I think they will. I mean, you know, Guangdong Freaks has been eliminated um, from the playoffs already. Uh, so it's not like they have a lot more, you know, a lot of motivation there. So I think that one Kia should win. And in the individual matchup phase, I mean, I prefer Canyon, obviously, as Showmaker. And also, you know, um, Noguri has been playing solid in that top lane. And Kian has not been in the best form this summer split. And LM and Fate are not very good period and frankly Guangdong freaks has been a mess um this whole summer split and right now they're on a two game losing two game losing streak so yeah i mean i think Damon kia will bounce back um it's not a sure thing though because Damon kia has been on a winning uh losing streak as well but just knowing that they um are better better have been playing a little bit better than Guangdong freaks and they have the playoff motivation here incentive to play well here not be in a letdown game um i think um that will be enough to give Damwon kia a push um to uh strive for the win today but i just want to point out um for those of you who are listening still um Damwon kia Guangdong freaks i think that's the game that i will completely fade um, usually on a four game slate like this, I typically fade one game that has the lowest kill upside. And this is it. Kwangdo Freaks has been playing very, very slow. Um, and Dawan Kia plays on the slow side as well. And they really need to secure this win for Dawan Kia for playoff seeding purposes. So I do expect Dawan Kia to kind of take care of business from, you know, approach it, approach the series from the, you know, more from the, you know, securing win secure standpoint, which means they're not, in my, in my opinion, they're not going to skirmish as much um, as they have had been probably had before when playoff implications are not, were not as strong. So I like that one Kia to win, but I just don't know how much that one Kia I'll have maybe in the team slot. Um, but other than that, I'm not that interested in that one Kia's uh, players. Now, the next matchup is very interesting, more interesting one, I think, DRX versus KT. As mentioned, DRX and KT are both, they have both um, clinched the playoffs. So right now, it's just a matter of playoff seeding game. Um, like I said, three teams are tied at nine and seven. Um, as you see here, Damon Kia has the better game records at 22 wins and 15 losses compared to 18 losses for KT and then 19 losses for DRX. But KT and DRX are playing against each other. Um, and if somehow Damon Kia loses today, I mean, that could change and jeopardize everything. But whoever wins this matchup between KT and DRX will become the fifth seed, in my opinion. 
Um, so let's look at what the playoff bracket looks like and how important it is to secure that uh, spot. So as you see here, T1 and Gen G have, you know, clinched their buys uh, from the quarterfinals and have advanced to the semifinals already for the summer spring spring split playoffs as the number one and number two seed respectively. And then, like I said, Sandbox has um, secured the number three seed. So they will play against the number six seed um, that will either be DRX or KT that I just talked about. And not many people are wanting to play the hot, hot, scorching hot Sandbox um, in, the, in the first round like that. So I fully expect KT and DRX looking ahead um, to try to win this game. So I think it's a huge motivation for both teams. Um, so we'll see where that leads us. So I think that just comes down to, us, you know, since they have the exact same playoff motivation level, I think we just got to compare the individual laning uh, uh, teams, right, team rosters. So KT um, has been led by aiming in the bottom lane at 80 carry position. Um, and then let's see, Vikla has been okay, Cuz has been okay, and Rascal has been pretty good. Um, so it's been really Rascal and Aiming, in my opinion, that have carried. And then for DRX, it has been Zika, surprisingly. Zika coming, you know, from China uh, in the LPL. Uh, he has resurrected his, um, his career by playing for DRX. Like this summer split, I don't... I actually don't know many mid laners that have played performed better than uh, Zika in the in the LCK. I mean, you talk about Chovy, maybe Faker has been okay, Showmaker has been okay. I mean, I can make an argument that Zika has been the best mid laner in the LCK. And stats support that. I mean, his kill participation and kill share percentage are high, and his um, gold per minute uh, rates uh, are high as well. Yeah, I mean, Zika has been carrying, and like I said, I think he's going to have an advantage there over Vikla in the mid lane. And then Piosik has been playing well. Um, I know DRX um, has str struggled a little bit, you know, in the middle of the summer split, but. I mean, they've started strong, and I think they're ending strong now on, on the two-game winning streak here um, with Piosik and Zika carrying this team. And Deft and Barrel have been okay, but obviously they're much experienced uh, and going up against aiming in life. I like DRX's chances here tonight. Um, I think DRX has a better roster and have been in better form. Um, so I, I think DRX should win this one. Um, I know from the Vegas odd standpoint, it's a pretty much of a coin flip. Um, so, and I think this will be a more high, higher kill upside game compared to the Damon Kia game that I just talked about. Um, so I don't think it's a bad idea to get exposure to both of them. DRX and KT as maybe a shorter stack in your lineups today on DF on this DFS slate. Um, like I said, I think both teams have a pretty good shot at winning here. But if I were to guess, I mean, which I'm doing on this on these videos, um, I am I'm I'm predicting that DRX will win two to one here tonight, and Zika will be the reason. Um, and the LPL, it's FPX W. And I, the reason I started with the LCK, it's a little more tricky tonight. And then in the LPL in China, I think it's more straightforward. Um, FPX as a huge favorite over Team WE. Team WE does not have any series win so far in the summer split. They're looking for their first win. Um, whereas FPX has all the playoff motivation that really they really, really need to win this um, to have a good shot at making the playoffs. So, yeah, I mean, just also the roster wise, FPX has better, better players. I mean, Shanks for WE has been okay, but Demon and View have been really bad. Um, I like FPX. Um, I don't know how else I can put it, but let's look at the standings just in case. Where FPX is at and what it means, you know, what it will mean um, if FPX wins here tonight. 
So as you see here, FPX is at the bottom of that um, playoff pack here. Um, FPX is barely alive. Um, they really need this win to advance up here. Um, they do have decent record game wise. So if they win, they'll be seven and nine tied with a few other teams up here, but they do have a good game uh, wins to loss ratio, which is the tiebreaker, I think, in these uh, seeding purposes. Uh, so I, I like FPX went here tonight. Like I said, Team WE does not have any win. They're 0 and 14, dead bottom. So I think FPX will probably be the most popular team uh, on the slate. And then the last matchup on the slate is Thunder Talk versus Ultra Prime. And this is very similar. Thunder Talk really needs this win for them to have a playoff chance, um, whereas Ultra Prime has been already eliminated from the playoffs. Um, I don't know if it's, it's such an easy analysis, but I just feel like Thunder Talk, you know, has to win this. Um, does that mean they're going to win it, um, given the roster and everything? I mean, Ultra Prime has been really bad. Frankly, I think they're on a five game losing. Yep. Five game losing streak. Really bad. Um, so I'm just going to have to go with Thunder Talk just based on that recent form and based on the playoff factor um, and based on the fact that Thunder Talk has actually been pretty good this summer split at times. I mean, Thunder Talk, I know they just lost their last series, um, but it was um and they actually had a pretty good showing, I thought, in my opinion, with Mage Wan and Kepler and Yao Yao. Um, it was against an elite team that I'm uh, trying to remember who it was. Uh, Victory 5, maybe one of those elite teams. Um, so they weren't expected to win. Um, they did not expect to win. Um, I think Thunder Talk here, though, against Ultra Prime, that's been struggling very badly the last two, three weeks. I think Thunder Talk should take care of business. And so, yeah, I mean, I think it's more of a favorite night game, um, a favorite night slate. Um, like I said, I'm predicting Damon Kia to win, but not good kill upside. I'm predicting DRX to win here uh, between the DRX and KT uh, teams here. Um, but, you know, that can be coin flip. And then FPX and then Thunder Talk to win respectively. Um, so, and both. Chinese games obviously have good, really good kill upside. So, um, but I, I think if you were to ask me um, what the most bloodiest, what the most kill upside game is, I would have to go with FPX and WE. I think Thunder Talk at times likes to play a little bit slow and methodical compared to uh let's say fpx um and then ultra prime as well they tend to play on the slower side so i like fpx and we to score well tonight and that's probably where i'm gonna have a longer stack um, of the players using fpx players i know they're gonna be they're highly priced but still i think i like them a lot here tonight um, but otherwise, yeah, I mean, I hope that was very helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me at DFS Chan. Um, if you like this video, please, please hit the like button. That would mean a lot to us. Um, otherwise, yeah, I hope to, uh, hope to see you guys at the top of the leaderboard and good luck out there. Have a good one. Bye-bye.